Hi, I'm Eric Stenbachen with Stenbachen Media. This is part two on meetings. How do you have a good meeting? Uh, if you haven't seen part one, go check it out. It's the homework you do before you get to a meeting. There's gonna be more information at the blog, link below, but here's my top three. Listen. Not listen to me, listen to the client. Listen to the, to the person you're having a meeting with. What is it that they need? They may have projects or needs that weren't exactly what you thought they were. If you listen and you have relevant, intelligent questions to help draw out from them what they need, you can present a much better solution because sometimes the solution that they need is not the same solution they thought they needed. So you finding out what their real problem and what their real need is, is job number one during a meeting. Don't quote money during a meeting. You can have a rate card with you, you should. You should have a list of standard fees and that should be shared with the client, that's just fine. But if you're talking about developing an entire project, a solution to their needs, and it's not as simple as just picking a number from here, here, and here, you owe it to both yourself and your client to finish the meeting with all the questions and answers and clarifications, go back to your desk, sit down, and give it some careful thought. And believe me, if you throw a number out during a meeting, that is the number people are going to remember. If you aim too high and you don't have a reason for why the number is too high, you lose. If you quote a number that's too low and you haven't included all the material that's required to meet their need, they're gonna hold you to it and you lose. Give it the thought that it deserves work up an appropriate estimate and present that after the meeting once everything has been clarified and everybody's on the same page. Have boundaries. When you go into a meeting, first boundary is time. You get there on time, that's your job. You wanna be ready to end on time. If the client wants to have the meeting go longer, that's just fine, go for it. If you've gotta be somewhere after a meeting and you know that going in, tell them ahead of time, hey, I've gotta be out of here at one o'clock. That way it's not awkward when it's you know 12.59 and you gotta leave. Another boundary has to do with lunch meetings. Lunch meetings are great. Everybody's gotta eat and it's a great way to catch somebody, but have boundaries before you start. How many people are showing up for lunch? Who's picking up the ticket? If you get that stuff figured out ahead of time, it makes for much less awkward moments at the end of the meeting when they brought seven of their friends from the office and they're expecting you to pick up the tab. Another dimension of boundaries is sticking to what you know. If your client asks you to propose a solution or some information, something you don't know about, it's okay to say, you know, I don't know, but I will research that and get back to you. It gives you an opportunity to both be accurate and to be seen as a valid resource for your potential client. If you've got other ideas, tips, things that you've learned, leave them in the comments below. There's lots more information on the same topic in the blog, also linked below. We only hit three, there's lots more there.